The country of North Korea occupies the northern part of the Korean peninsula, which juts out from the Asian mainland in the east. North Korea covers about 55% of the peninsula's land area, South Korea covers the rest. The two Koreas were long united as a single nation, but since the mid-20th century they have been separated and have taken very different paths. While South Korea is a democracy, North Korea follows a communist system of government. Relations between the two countries have generally been hostile. The capital of North Korea is Pyongyang. Area 47,399 square miles, 122,762 square kilometers. Population, 2020 est. 25,779,000. Land and climate. North Korea borders China on the north and touches Russia in the extreme northeast. South Korea lies to the south. To the east is the East Sea, Sea of Japan, and to the west is the Yellow Sea. North and South Korea are separated by a region called the Demilitarized Zone, DMZ, which is about 2.5 miles, 4 kilometers, wide. The DMZ was established by the truce that ended fighting in the Korean War in 1953. It roughly follows latitude 38 degrees north, commonly called the 38th parallel. The areas north and south of the DMZ are heavily fortified, and both sides maintain large contingents of troops there. The landscape of North Korea is rugged, with mountains and valleys dominating. The Kama Highlands, a plateau in the northeast, have an average elevation of 3,300 feet 1, meters. They are called the roof of the Korean peninsula. At the northern edge of this plateau rises Mount Paiktu. With an elevation of 9,022 feet 2, meters, it is the highest mountain in North Korea and on the peninsula. Mount Paiktu is an extinct volcano in the Changbak, Changbai, mountains along the North Korea-China border. The Nangnam Mountains run from north to south through the middle of the country, and the Kangnam and Myoyang Ranges run parallel to each other toward the southwest. The western mountains are separated by large river valley plains, which merge with a narrow coastal plain along the Yellow Sea. The Hamgong Mountains extend from the Nangnam Mountains to the northeast. Along the east coast, the Taibak Mountains extend from southeastern North Korea into South Korea. In these mountains is Mount Kumgang, which is renowned for its scenic beauty. Mount Kumgang rises to 5,374 feet 1,638 meters. The longest river on the Korean peninsula is the Yalu, which forms the northwestern boundary between North Korea and China. From its source on Mount Paiktu, it flows southwest for some 500 miles 800 kilometers, into the Yellow Sea. The Tumen River, also beginning at Mount Paiktu, flows northeast for about 325 miles 520 kilometers, into the East Sea. Another important river is the Taedong, which flows through Pyongyang. North Korea has a continental climate with a wide range of temperatures from summer to winter. The summer, from June to September, is warm. The average July temperatures are above the upper 60s F, about 20 degrees Celsius, in most places. The winter, from December to March, is long and cold. The average January temperatures range between about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 7 degrees Celsius, in the south and minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 23 degrees Celsius, in the northern interior. Most of the country receives about 40 inches, 100 centimeters, of precipitation each year. About three-fifths of the annual precipitation falls from June to September. This heavy concentration of rainfall is related to the humid summer monsoon, seasonal wind, from the Pacific Ocean, which also produces occasional typhoons. Although only a small portion of the total precipitation occurs in winter, snowfall can accumulate to a depth of several feet in the northern mountains. Plants and Animals Plant life in the mountains, especially around Mount Paiktu, consists of coniferous, cone-bearing, trees such as fir, spruce, and pine. The western lowlands were originally covered by mixed forests with many types of plants. However, deforestation has left only remote patches of the original forests. Most of the lowlands are now used for farming, except for some of the hills that are covered with small pine groves mixed with oaks, lindens, maples, and birches. Deer, antelope, goats, tigers, and leopards were once plentiful in North Korea. Their numbers have greatly decreased because of deforestation. Today these animals are restricted to the remote forests. 
In the plains, however, it is still possible to see wild pigeons, herons, cranes, and many migratory waterfowl. Since the end of the Korean War in 1953, the DMZ between North and South Korea has been almost untouched and has largely reverted to nature. It contains many ecosystems, including forests and wetlands. It serves as a sanctuary for hundreds of bird species. It is also home to dozens of fish species and Asiatic black bears, lynxes, and other mammals. People and culture. The population of North Korea grew fairly rapidly after the Korean War, more than doubling in size between 1953 and 1993. Although the rate of population increase began slowing in the late 20th century, it remained nearly twice that of South Korea. North Korea is much more sparsely populated, however, with a population density less than half that of the South. The population of North Korea is unevenly distributed, with many people living along the coasts but only scattered settlements in the interior. Ethnic groups and languages. The population of North Korea is almost entirely Korean. The only significant minority is a small group of Chinese. All Koreans speak the Korean language. The relationship of Korean to other languages is not known for certain. It may be related to Japanese or to languages of the Altaic group, which includes Turkish and Mongolian. Korean also contains many loanwords from Chinese. The Korean alphabet is known in North Korea as Chosan Musha and in South Korea as Hangul. It is composed of 24 letters, including 10 vowels and 14 consonants. In North Korea a systematic effort has been made to eliminate Chinese and Western loanwords, as well as any traces of the Japanese imposed during the colonial period. Religion. The communist government of North Korea discourages religion. Nevertheless, many North Koreans practice Kondagyo, a native Korean religion whose name means, religion of the heavenly way. Known originally as Tonghek, Eastern Learning, it combines elements of Confucianism, Buddhism, and Roman Catholicism. It was founded in the mid-19th century in opposition to foreign cultural influences. Shamanism. The belief that certain individuals have special powers through their contact with the spirit world, was an important force before the introduction of Buddhism and Confucianism. Today, however, its practice has nearly died out in North Korea. Culture. Korean culture is rooted in the ancient traditions of shamanism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. Korea has historically been part of the Chinese cultural realm, though the Chinese influence has been given a distinctive Korean stamp. Western cultural ideas were introduced in Korea beginning in the late 19th century. Under communist rule, North Korea underwent a cultural upheaval. Since the 1950s every North Korean has been assigned to a unit outside the family, whether it be a school unit, a military unit, or a work unit. The unit provides housing, medical care, and food. Usually a family lives in a home provided by the father's work unit. The unit controls most aspects of a person's life. Members must ask the unit for permission to travel, to see a doctor, or to purchase certain goods. They must also receive the unit's approval before marrying. Most North Koreans have little free time. In addition to work or school, they are required to attend political study sessions and to perform volunteer labor for the government. Leisure and cultural activities are regimented and geared toward organized group activities, such as rallies and museum tours. All of these activities are done with the members of one's unit. A dominant force in the culture of North Korea is the cult of Kim Il-sung, the country's founding leader. Statues of Kim adorn all sorts of public places, and photographs hang in workplaces, schools, hospitals, shops, and people's homes. Schoolchildren memorize poems about him, and adults quote from his writings. The government uses the fine arts and cultural institutions to promote the Kim cult and promote communist ideas. All North Korean writers, artists, dancers, and musicians are assigned to government cultural institutions. Government-sponsored museums include the Korean Revolution Museum and the Korean Art Gallery in Pyongyang. Education and Social Welfare In North Korea education is free and compulsory for 12 years beginning at age 5. The system includes one year of preschool, five years of primary school, and six years of secondary school. Schools emphasize science and technology. Institutions of higher education offer programs of two to six years in length. The most important of these schools is Kim Il-sung University in Pyongyang. A well-developed system of adult education includes technical schools in large industrial cities. 
North Korea is a welfare state. Medical care is free, but there is a shortage of doctors, medical equipment, and medicine. Medical benefits are provided for workers who are temporarily or permanently disabled and women during pregnancy and childbirth. There are also old age pensions. The standard of living has improved for the average North Korean since World War II. Because of the high priority given to industry and defense, however, the distribution of goods and social services has long been inadequate. During the 1990s North Korea endured a devastating famine that forced many people to leave their homes and families in search of food. Hospitals and healthcare centers ran out of medicine and medical supplies, and the social welfare system failed despite much assistance from national and international relief agencies. The country remains heavily dependent on food aid. Urban and Rural Settlement The population of the Korean Peninsula was mostly rural until well into the 20th century. During the Japanese occupation, 1910-45, cities grew as industry and transportation were developed. Later, the communist government's emphasis on manufacturing encouraged many North Koreans to move from the countryside to the cities. Most of the cities were destroyed during the Korean War of the 1950s and have since been rebuilt. Urbanization increased rapidly after the war, especially in the period 1953-60. By the early 21st century almost two-thirds of North Korea's population lived in urban areas. Pyongyang is by far the largest city, its population greatly outnumbering that of Hamhung, the second-largest city. Other major cities include Nampo, Chongjin, and Kaesong. Most of the rural population lives in the eastern and western coastal lowlands and river valley plains. Economy. North Korea has a command economy. This means that the national government owns the land and major equipment and controls economic activity. Because the government also controls the release of information, reliable data on economic performance usually have been lacking. Outside observers, however, have agreed that the North Korean economy has consistently struggled. The reasons include years of poor planning and a lack of modern technology and equipment. In the early 1990s the country's economic problems were compounded by the collapse of the Soviet Union and the communist governments of Eastern Europe. Those countries had been North Korea's largest trading partners and sources of aid. By the mid-1990s many North Koreans were dying of starvation because of the government's inability to produce enough food. Despite the national policy of self-reliance, called Juche, this poor economic performance led the government to pursue some foreign investment and increase trade. By the turn of the 21st century the situation had improved somewhat because of international food assistance. Food shortages and malnutrition remain serious problems, however. Overall, North Korea has changed from an agricultural to an industrial country since World War II. In 1954 the government began laying out the country's economic policy and national economic plans. The plans have generally emphasized the development of heavy industries and mining at the expense of agriculture and the production of consumer goods. Agriculture, fishing, and forestry. Most of North Korea's agricultural land is in collective farms, the rest is in state-operated farms. The collective farms include hundreds of families. They are managed by committees, which supervise the work teams and set production quotas. Produce is delivered to the government, which controls distribution through state stores. The state farms serve as models for research and development. Since the winters are long and cold, most of North Korea's farmland supports only a summer crop. The country has seen an increase in cultivated land, irrigation projects, the use of chemical fertilizers, and mechanization. However, since the early 1990s it has also experienced chronic shortages of fertilizers, seed grains, and farming equipment. The leading food crops are grains, including rice, corn, maize, wheat, and barley. Potatoes, sweet potatoes, soybeans and other beans, cabbages, and apples and other fruits are also important. Livestock such as goats, pigs, sheep, cattle, and chickens are raised mainly in areas poorly suited for crop raising. Fish are an important part of North Korea's food supply. Most fishing takes place along the coasts on each side of the peninsula, but deep-sea fishing expanded beginning in the late 20th century. The catch includes pollock, sardines, mackerel, herring, pike, yellowtail, and shellfish. Aquaculture, or fish farming, became increasingly important in the early 21st century. The most common species raised on fish farms include catfish and carp. 
North Korea's forests were depleted under Japanese rule. Since then the country has lost more forests to natural disasters and from people cutting down trees to burn for fuel during energy shortages. The government has taken steps to replant trees to encourage logging operations. Spruce, fir, larch, and pine are the main commercial species. Industry. North Korea contains most of the mineral deposits on the Korean peninsula. The most important include coal, iron ore, limestone, magnesite, lead, and zinc. Hydroelectric plants on the Yalu River and its tributaries are the main power source. Thermal plants are also important, however, because of the unreliability of hydroelectricity during the dry season. The emphasis on heavy industry in North Korea has led to the development of large iron and steel, machinery, and chemicals industries. The machine building industry produces large quantities of military equipment in addition to industrial and farm machinery. The chemical industry focuses mainly on fertilizers and petrochemicals. Other valuable products include textiles and cement. Services. The government's policy of self-reliance has historically caused North Korea to de-emphasize foreign trade. At first North Korea traded only with the Soviet Union and China, but since the 1960s the number of trading partners has grown. China remains the leading source of imports and destination of exports. Trade with South Korea, banned after the Korean War, was resumed in 1988. By the early 21st century South Korea was the North's second largest trading partner. North Korea also trades with India, Thailand, and Russia. Major imports are mineral products, machinery and electronics, textiles, transportation equipment, and food. Exports include mineral fuels and oils, textiles and clothing, iron and steel, machinery, fish, and agricultural products. The government maintains strict control over tourism. Most visitors come from Asia, particularly from China. Tourists, especially those from the West, are tightly restricted in their movements. They must be accompanied by official North Korean guides. Transportation and communications. Railways are the main means of transport in North Korea for both passengers and freight. Road transportation is not as important because few people own motor vehicles. River transportation is important for moving agricultural products, minerals, and passengers. The most important rivers used for freight transportation are the Yalu, Taedong, and Karyong. The main ports include Changjin, Wonsan, Haiju, and Nampo. Air services are controlled by the Air Force, and both domestic and international airlinks are limited. International flights connect Pyongyang with Beijing, China, Moscow, Russia, and a few other Asian and European cities. Telecommunication services are lacking in North Korea. While South Korea has become a global leader in telecommunications, North Korea has lagged far behind. North Korea started its own mobile phone network in 2008, and phone ownership grew quickly in the 2010s. Nevertheless, the percentage of North Koreans with mobile devices remained far below that of South Korea and other Asian countries. Even the few North Koreans with cell phones are restricted to the government-controlled network, which does not allow international calls and provides access only to heavily censored content. Unrestricted internet use is limited to foreign visitors and a small North Korean elite, including researchers and government officials. The government also strictly controls the content of all newspapers and radio and television broadcasts. Government. North Korea, officially called the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, has a communist government. Since the country's creation in 1948, it has been ruled by the Kim dynasty. Kim Il-sung, the founding leader, ruled North Korea from 1948 until his death in 1994. His son Kim Jong-il ruled the country from 1994 until his own death in 2011. Kim Jong-il's son Kim Jong-un then took power. According to the North Korean constitution, the country's highest organ of state power is the legislature, called the Supreme People's Assembly, SPA. It is made up of representatives who are elected every five years. A presidium, or standing committee, within the assembly is empowered to act on behalf of the assembly when it is not in session. The dominant executive and administrative body is the cabinet. It includes the premier, several vice premiers, and various ministers, all of whom are appointed by the assembly. The cabinet is accountable to the assembly. Despite the official outline of powers in the constitution, the government of North Korea is dominated by the Communist Korean Workers' Party, KWP.
The SPA, though nominally the highest power, really serves only to approve the decisions of the KWP. Although the President of the Assembly is the nominal head of state, that position is actually held by the leader of the KWP. After 1998, the head of state was also the chairman of the National Defense Commission, NDC, which leads the military. A constitutional amendment in 2009 identified the NDC chairman as the country's supreme leader. That position was held by Kim Jong-il and later by Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un's powers were expanded further in 2016. In that year he was made chairman of a new body called the State Affairs Commission, which replaced the NDC as the highest government entity. A number of other nominal political parties and social organizations serve to support the KWP. All political activities, however, are directed by the KWP or require its approval and must closely follow the party line and policies. The KWP controls the electoral system and draws up lists of approved candidates. North Korea's judiciary functions on three levels. The central court is at the top, the provincial courts are in the middle, and the people's courts in the cities, counties, and districts are at the base. Central court judges are elected for three-year terms by the SPA. Members of provincial and local courts are elected by people's assemblies from a list of KWP-approved candidates. Closely linked to the courts is the central procurator's office. This office, assisted by provincial and local procurators, investigates and prosecutes crimes. The procuracy is headed by a procurator general, who is chosen by the SPA. History. Korea was freed from 35 years of Japanese rule by the defeat of Japan in World War II. Following the end of the war in 1945, the Soviet Union occupied the peninsula north of latitude 38 degrees north, the 38th parallel. The United States occupied the area south of that line. Representatives from the Soviet and U.S. military commands met to plan the reunification of Korea, but the talks were unsuccessful. Meanwhile, the Soviets set up a communist government in the north. It was led by Kim Il-sung, a leader of the resistance movement against the Japanese occupation. The United Nations UN, took up the question of Korean unification in 1947. It called for UN-supervised nationwide elections to establish a single Korean government. The Soviet Union refused to allow the North to participate. The South, however, held elections that eventually led to the establishment of the Republic of Korea, or South Korea. In the North, the Communist government proclaimed the Democratic People's Republic of Korea in September 1948. For a full history of the peninsula before 1948, see Korea. Although the Soviets left North Korea in late 1948, they continued to provide military training and equipment. In June 1950 Kim Il-sung launched an invasion of South Korea, igniting the Korean War. Kim sought to reunify Korea under a communist government. U.S. troops and other U.N. forces fought back the invasion. In late 1950 Communist China entered the war on the side of North Korea. The war ended in a stalemate in 1953. The two sides signed an armistice, an agreement to stop the fighting, but not a formal peace treaty. A demilitarized zone, DMZ, about 2.5 miles 4 kilometers, wide was created between North and South Korea, roughly along the pre-war boundary. North Korea under Kim Il-sung. As head of state, Kim Il-sung quickly crushed all opposition to his rule and eliminated his last rivals for power within the Korean Workers' Party. He would rule unchallenged for 46 years over one of the world's most isolated and repressive societies. He maintained his firm hold on power by promoting a personality cult centered on himself as the great leader of the Korean people. Kim set out to transform North Korea into a militaristic and highly regimented society. It was devoted to the twin goals of industrialization and the reunification of the Korean peninsula under North Korean rule. Kim introduced a philosophy of Juche, or, self-reliance, under which North Korea tried to develop its economy with little or no help from foreign countries. In fact, however, the country did accept aid from its communist allies, the Soviet Union, China, and the countries of Eastern Europe. North Korea's economy grew rapidly in the 1950s and 60s, but it began to stagnate as aid from the Soviet Union and China declined. Another strain on the economy was the country's massive spending on the armed forces. In addition, the strong emphasis on heavy industries led to shortages of everyday necessities and a decline in living conditions. 
A new constitution introduced in 1972 changed the premiership to a presidency, which Kim Il-sung assumed. Kim also retained control of the Korean Workers' Party. In 1980 he raised his eldest son, Kim Jong-il, to high posts in the party and the military. In effect, this move designated the younger Kim as his heir. In foreign policy North Korea cultivated close ties with the Soviet Union and China and remained hostile to the United States and South Korea. One of its most brazen acts against South Korea was sending commandos to Seoul in an attempt to assassinate President Park Chung-hee in 1968. In the early 1970s the two Koreas came together for the first time to discuss reunification, but North Korea suspended the talks in 1973. In the 1980s and early 1990s North Korean policy toward the South alternated between provocation and gestures of peace. A breakthrough came in 1991, when North and South Korea signed a non-aggression agreement, and the two countries were admitted to the United Nations. This thaw in relations stalled, however, as suspicion grew that North Korea planned to build nuclear weapons. The Kim Jong-il era. Kim Il-sung died in 1994, and his son Kim Jong-il came to power. In a revised constitution introduced in 1998, the office of president was written out and the elder Kim was written in as eternal president of the republic. Kim Jong-il was re-elected chairman of the National Defense Commission, which became the country's highest office. Throughout the 1990s North Korea's economy struggled as a result of many years of government mismanagement. The situation was made worse by the collapse of the Soviet Union and the communist governments of Eastern Europe in the early 1990s. That eliminated most of the country's trading partners and much of its foreign aid. In addition, in the mid-1990s the country suffered a series of natural disasters, including floods and drought. Serious food shortages resulted. As many as 1 million North Koreans may have died of starvation. These problems led the government to open up the country to trade and foreign food aid. During this period North Korea took steps to improve its relations with many other countries. Shortly after Kim Jong-il came to power, the North Korean government signed an agreement with the United States in which it agreed not to develop nuclear weapons. The agreement restored hope for reconciliation between the two Koreas. Hopes for a peaceful reunification were encouraged by South Korean President Kim Dae-young's visit to North Korea in 2000. It was the first time any Korean head of state had traveled to the other side. In 2007 trains from both the North and the South crossed the demilitarized zone to the other side, the first such travel since the Korean War. Later that year the two Koreas held a second summit. South Korean President Ro Mu Yun met with Kim Jong-il in Pyongyang. Tensions on the peninsula rose again, however, after the election of Lee Myung-bak as South Korean president in late 2007. Lee took a more hard-line position toward the North. In early 2009 the North Korean government announced that it was ending all military and political agreements with South Korea. A constant strain on North-South relations was North Korea's nuclear ambitions. In 2002 the North confirmed international suspicions by revealing that it had continued its nuclear weapons program in violation of the 1994 agreement with the United States. North Korea took part in talks about the nuclear issue with South Korea, the United States, Russia, China, and Japan. However, the talks ended in 2004 without an agreement. North Korea claimed to have nuclear weapons in 2005 and conducted tests of nuclear devices in 2006 and 2009. Its actions raised tensions not only on the peninsula but also in the international community. Two incidents in 2010 further inflamed tensions between the Koreas. In March a South Korean warship exploded and sank in the Yellow Sea. International investigators concluded that the explosion had been caused by a torpedo fired from a North Korean submarine. South Korea soon ended all trade relations with the North. North Korea denied responsibility for the attack and cut all ties with the South. Then in November, as South Korea was conducting a military exercise off the country's northwestern coast, North Korean artillery shells bombarded the South Korean island of Yeonpyeon. The shells hit a military base and civilian homes, and there were several casualties. South Korean forces returned fire. The incident was one of the most serious episodes of hostility between the North and South in years. The Kim Jong-un era. Kim Jong-il died in December 2011. His son Kim Jong-un was then declared North Korea's supreme leader, 
continuing the Kim dynasty into a third generation. The leadership change brought greater uncertainty to relations between North Korea and South Korea. North Korea began using increasingly hostile language toward the United States and South Korea. North Korea threatened to attack both countries with missiles. In 2013 North Korea shut down a joint industrial zone in Kaesong, in which South Korean companies were allowed to manufacture goods in North Korea. The industrial zone was reopened about four months later. It was shut down again in 2016, however, this time by South Korea. Under Kim Jong-un, North Korea significantly increased its efforts to develop nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles. A series of tests showed the increasing power and range of its devices. In July 2017 North Korea tested an intercontinental ballistic missile with an estimated range of 5,000 miles 8, kilometers. The test demonstrated that North Korea could potentially send a missile to the continental United States. The launch was condemned by leaders worldwide. At the urging of the United States, the United Nations Security Council adopted a new set of economic sanctions against North Korea to punish the country for its weapons tests. In September 2017 North Korea tested its sixth nuclear bomb, its most powerful to date. The acceleration of North Korea's nuclear program led to a war of words between Kim Jong-un and U.S. President Donald Trump. Soon after the September 2017 nuclear test, Trump issued a threat during a speech to the United Nations. He warned that if the United States were forced to defend itself or its allies, it would have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Kim Jong-un responded with strong words of his own, warning that Trump would pay dearly for his speech. In 2018, however, the tense situation seemed to take an abrupt turn toward diplomacy. In February, North Korea sent a delegation led by Kim Jong-un's sister to the Winter Olympics in South Korea. A month later, Kim invited President Trump to meet for talks about North Korea's nuclear program. Trump accepted the invitation, setting the stage for the first-ever meeting between a sitting U.S. president and a North Korean leader. The remarkable turn of events continued in April, when Kim Jong-un met with South Korean President Moon Jae-in in the border village of Panmunjom. During the meeting, Kim became the first North Korean leader ever to set foot in South Korea. The leaders agreed to work toward removing all nuclear weapons from the Korean peninsula. They also pledged to negotiate a treaty to bring an official end to the Korean War. The weeks leading up to the proposed North Korea-US summit were filled with uncertainty. Kim threatened to call off the meeting, in part because of continuing joint military drills between the United States and South Korea. Trump responded by announcing that the meeting was cancelled. After further talks between North Korean, South Korean, and U.S. officials, however, the summit was revived. On June 12, the world watched as Kim and Trump met in Singapore. The leader signed a joint statement that called for the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. However, it provided no details about when or how North Korea would give up its weapons. Trump, in a surprising move, agreed to stop the U.S.-South Korea military drills. While some people faulted the statement for its vague language, others considered it a meaningful step toward peace on the peninsula.